everyone. Welcome to the Knitting Unicorn Podcast. I'm your host, Rebecca, and this is episode 15. And if you are a new viewer, welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Uh, I hope you all had a wonderful holiday, regardless of what you celebrate. And I wish a happy new year to everyone out there. So today, this is my last podcast of 2018, I wanted to do a kind of quick year in review and talk a little bit about some whips and uh, FOs. I don't have a lot of FOs. Well, that, I mean, I have some socks, but whatever. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about my 2019 knitting plans um, events that I want to go to and stuff like that. So let's get into it. Uh, I guess I'll start with current FOs. So as you can see, I'm wearing my throwback. I showed this to you guys last time. It wasn't quite finished, but now it is. Um, I think it came out really nice and I had a lot of hesitation about it. Could be the good lip bow. Um, I talked about how when I was knitting it, I wasn't aware that when I started it, I, don't ask, it was a blonde moment or something. Um, the pattern, it's knit in the flat, in the flat, it's knit flat. Um, so you're purling color work, uh, not doing it in the round. And also there's a few rows where the deeper V's are. So this couple rows here, um, a couple rows here, a couple rows here, and a couple rows here, where you're carrying three colors across. Um, which can be cumbersome, but doing it purling is even more cumbersome. And it's not non-super washable, it is super washable. Um, so all of these things combined made me really nervous that there was gonna be a lot of holes, there would be color peeking through, and there is color peeking through, but it's only at the very top. You can see at the very top of the V's, there's some bits and then at the very bottom they don't even show up that well on camera but there's like one there so there's a strand running down here for the very very bottom row of blue and the very very top row of brown um, that you can see where I caught the strands um, but it all blocked out really nicely and um, also wearing it a lot has kind of made it all settle and it, it looks really nice and I've gotten a lot of compliments and I really really love it um, and my floats don't even look that's that's my pin <laughs> um, my floats don't even look that horrible but when I was knitting it they felt so I don't even know I, I tried to do them pretty loose because I often do my color work too tight like most people so I made a real concerted effort to make them loose but then I thought it was too loose and long story short it all worked out really well so I think it came out nice and I'm really really happy with it and I wear this all the time and I will probably I might get another one at some point in time I will tell you what though I will definitely this is the magpie uh, domestic home Worsted Superwash Merino, um, and this is in the color Selkie. And oh no, I have a little pull. I keep getting pulls in my sweaters from the dog. Anyway, um, there we go. I will definitely knit another sweater in this. There's an, a pattern that just came out using this yarn, and um, I really, really, really want to use it. So uh, I'll have to find that and dig that up somewhere, but. I can tell you what it is. It's not in my current queue or plans for the year because I don't have any more of this yarn. I'll get into that later. Um, but yeah, so throwback cardigan by Andrea Mowry. The brown is 
magpie fibers domestic home which is worsted in selkie and then this is the spin cycle yarns uh, dream state and the colors are melancholia deep bump and always ready um, and these are the original colors for the pattern that Andrea used in her sample. The only thing I changed was the color. Um, in fact, the, I didn't make any modifications to this sweater at all. I knit it exactly as is. Um, and I absolutely love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So, that's that. Um, then I have a bunch of socks, which I'll go grab because I, left them in the other room. So, for my other FOs, I have a bunch. Um, because I spent so much time in October, September, October, and most of November working on sweaters, uh, my box of socks knitting got a little uh, left behind. So, I since Thanksgiving, I've had to crank out one, two, three, Five pairs of socks. I, I, one of them I gave as a gift, so I'll put a picture of that one in after. But I had to crank out a bunch of socks. So, and I did get my 12 pairs, and I'll put in a picture up here of my box of socks. So the five pairs that I finished for the rest of the year are, this is, I should put them on blockers. Eh, nobody cares. Um, they're all vanilla socks. And one, three of them are afterthought heels, one's just a regular hip flap and gusset, and one is a toe up situation. So, anyway, this is the first one. And this is Nomadic Yarns Yuletide on her Sparkle Sock base. I bought this last year for Christmas, but I finally knit it up this year. So, that's that one. It's so sparkly. Um, I've been wearing it for Christmas, so it's a little bit. Apologies. Um, the second one is this one. Oh my god. Oh. Actually, I have both of them. So, this is just a vanilla sock with a heel flapping gusset. I did not match the stripes, I did not make them match after the heel flap. I just knit them, and I thought it would be fun to do it that way. This is uh, Piggy Yarns nine and three quarters colorway. It's all the uh, Hogwarts house colors. And this is in her Lux sock, which is an MCN. And it is gorgeous, and I love it so much. I've also been wearing this one a lot, so I'm wearing them all a lot. So that one's really nice. Then I have my socks on a plane. I finished these. I showed you this last time because I had this one done, I think, um, or almost done. This is uh, Teeny Button Studios colorway is Mully Grubs. I believe this is on BFL. And it's a toe up sock. So, this is the first time I've done like a reverse heel flapping gusset. It was kind of weird, but it fits really nicely. Uh, and I really love this BFL base that she has. So I think it came out pretty well. I did, I stopped working on it at one point and then I picked it back up and I did not make a good notation of where I finished the cable, so a little, I did it the wrong way and I didn't feel like ripping out a cable, so I just kept going. You don't even notice it though, like, once I point it out to you, it blends in, so, yay. The next sock is from the Cozy Knitter, and it's the uh, Kiss Me I'm Irish uh, sock set. So it came with the coordinating mini. And uh, this is just my little afterthought heel and toe. And I uh, struggled with afterthought heels in the past, having them not fit very well. But I followed uh, what Amy Florence does from the Stranded podcast, Stranded Dye Works. Um, I used her little recipe that she put on a, a YouTube video for recently. And it actually worked really well. This is... Uh, I still prefer a heel flap and gusset, but for an afterthought heel, these numbers worked really well for me. So if I do afterthought heels in the future, I will 
continue to do this. So definitely check out her little tutorial, I guess, on uh, that. And then just a rounded toe. And then the last pair I did, which I gave to my best friend Amber, was the gingerbread house sock I got from um, Whips on Sticks. Uh, Kyla, she sent, uh, Kayla, she sent that to me for the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted. And um, it was a gorgeous, I'll put a picture up here. It's a uh, red and white speckle striped with brown for Gingerbread House. And I did the heels, toes, and cuffs in um, Lolo Did It Sri Raja. So those are my five pairs of sock FOs. I can't believe I knit that many socks. It's a sock knitting machine. And I dreaded it. Oh my god, it was awful. <laughs> I'm glad that... Um, Kristen from Bull Run is not doing the box of socks cal again because I don't know, that was a lot of work. So anyway, um, and then my last FO, I've already shown this as an FO, and then I I've talked about this so many times, I'm so glad that it's actually done. But you may remember that I did the uh, Pure Joy by Hobi Locatelli, and I thought I finished it and that I had messed up and not put the bottom uh, stripe on and then I realized, and I bound off, and then I realized that I had miscalculated and I bound off too soon. So I decided that I wanted to get this over with and I picked up all the stitches. So it, it was like this. Pretend that purple isn't there. It was like this. It was too small and I really didn't like it. But then I picked it all up and added the purple band. This is how it was supposed to be in the first place. And so now it's there. I haven't blocked it, but it's quite long now. And it wraps around nicely, but um, I don't know. I have said before, if you've watched, been watching for a while, that I don't care for fingering white shawls. Um, I also really don't care for this shape shawl. This is the first one I ever did, this shape, this long skinny crescent shape. Um, it's just not a style I like. I like a much bigger, deeper V um, or a, the triangle ones. I don't like crescent shawls, but I would never have known that if I didn't knit this and put it on. So, it's done, it's off my needles. I'll probably hang on to it. I considered giving it away, but I I do think that when we go to Florida almost every year, and I do think that this might be not a bad shawl to have in the evenings um, to just kind of drape over my shoulders, not to wrap around. That might actually work out well, so I'm gonna give that a try next time I go down there and see if this is a useful shawl for that scenario. Um, however, up here in New Hampshire, it's probably not something I would do often. So that's that, those are all my FOs. Um, I think I'm gonna talk, before I talk about my whips, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my year in review. Um, I don't, I'm not going to pull out all the items, I'm just going to put pictures up. But this year, I knit a lot this year. <laughs> I need to slow down because my hands are hurting. So, we started with a pair of socks. The first item was a pair of shorty socks for one of my coworkers. Um, these are done in the Caps colorway, which is a Washington Capitals uh, hockey team colorway. Um, then I knit the Misty Flax. I call it that because the colorway was a misty blue, but it's just a flax sweater for a baby. And that was for a friend of mine. And I tried to do something cute with the stripes, but I don't like the way it came out. Then we did another pair of vanilla socks. These were my Scrumptious Pearl yarn in PYT. And then I did the carrot top hat for my friend Kate, and that was a kit 
from Romney Ridge Yarn and Fiber Company, and it was a colorwork hat. So cute. A couple more pairs of socks, my Team USA socks, which I did during the Olympics, which were the uh, Hermione's Everyday Socks, and I did it in Lolo Did It Triumph, which is a red, white, and blue colorway, and then the Sriracha colorway was the Heels and Toes. Then I did my Rhinebeck Sweater Weather Socks, which were a colorway, self-striping self colorway from Nomadic Yarns in her twisty sock base. Oh my god. Then the Lafayette Shawl, which is my pink shawl that I wear all the time. It's actually Paris Toujours, and the colorway is Lafayette. I did my shorty puff skein socks, which were a pair of shorties in Teeny Button Studios Poffle of Puff Skeins colorway, um, and that was a September Harry Potter Mystery Club colorway for 2017. And I knit those uh, while I was at Universal Studios hanging out in Diagon Alley. Seemed appropriate. Then I knit my first adult sweater. I had actually knit most of the light flax for myself after Rhinebeck 2017, but I didn't like the way it fit, so it got frogged. Um, and that yarn is actually in my queue for another project, which I'll talk about. Um, so I knit a timely cardigan, and I did that. I had bought yarn for the um, breathing space sweater, and I decided I didn't want to knit it because after doing the light blacks, I was kind of turned off of pullovers. So I decided to scrap that and do something else. So the yarn I had bought was Spun Right Round Classic Soft in uh, Reaper's Rags, which is a gray color, which I'm also using for my Tegna, and uh, Secret Handshake, which is a blue speckle. So I did that. I finished that timely um, in less than a month. I think most of my sweaters have been about three weeks. Uh, but that was a really small one. But it was fingering white, so. Uh, and I really love that. I love wearing that over dresses and stuff. Then I did my Mayflower socks, which were the Wildflower and Honeycomb sock by This Handmade Life. And I did that in the Wool Barn Strong Sock in the Bramble colorway, which I still have more of. And I think I could get a pair of shorties out of this because this yarn, oh, yes. there we go. So this is the main color. Hopefully I can get it to not blow out so much. Whatever. It's beautiful. It's this like creamy color with very little raspberry and purple speckles. I, I absolutely love this. And then this is the uh, mini, the coordinating mini. So I think I could get a pair of shorties out of this. So I might give that a try. I love it so much. <sighs> what else did we knit this year? This is crazy. Um. So I did the Mayflower socks and then the April shower socks. They did them, I did them reverse. And that was the Drifty Drop Socks pattern by Kay Jones. And that was done in Birch Dye Works uh, Storm Cloud, which I just thought was so perfect together. Then I knit my Campside Cardi. I wear the Campside Cardi like every day. Between the throwback and the Campside, I wear them constantly. It is my favorite, favorite sweater. The only modification I made to this sweater is that I, um, there's four charts for the eyelets and I kept starting the fourth chart and that's where you have the most eyelets and I really didn't like the way it was looking uh, on my sweater. So I decided to scrap that and just do more of chart three and I think that that worked out really well. Um, I, I really love the way that that sweater came out and I will definitely knit another one of those. Definitely. Then I made some socks for my husband for Father's Day. Those were a self-striping sock from Nomadic Yarns in her BFL, and it was the Lupin colorway. Then I did the Let It Shine socks by Sarah Yude, and those were knit up in Lemonade Shop Mighty Sock in her Magical Lucky Charms base, um, which was inspired by the Lucky Charms that came out this year with the unicorn, and obviously I had to. Those socks are gorgeous. I wear those a lot. Um, and I knit the beekeeper. So I did the 
four day cal with all of knits. Um, and I knit the beekeeper and I did not finish it in four days, but I didn't have to. For the size I knit, I had, I think eight days, seven or eight days. I knit it in six. Um, and it's a cropped DK pattern um, cardigan. And I love that one too. That cardigan fits so well. Um, I can't even tell you. It is such a nice fitting cardigan. I made the sleeves short. The one thing I did that I kind of messed up on, and maybe I'll fix it one day, but eh, is one of the sleeves I bound up a little too tightly. Um, but I don't think it's noticeable. So maybe I'll unpick it and redo it one day. Who knows? We'll see. So then the next thing is the underwing mitts. I actually knit two pairs of underwing mitts. Where's the other pair? Why did those not come out? Did I not knit those this year? I did. So I knit two pairs of underwing mitts. And the first pair came out really, really tiny. Um, I'm a pretty tight knitter anyway. And I don't normally gauge swatch on um, accessories. But these fit the 10 year old. Okay. So I ended up giving them to a friend who had small hands, and I knit myself another pair in um, the Barrett Wool Home Fingering, which is like a sport weight. It's, it's a very plump fingering. And I also went up a couple needle sizes. So, um, and those came out perfect, and I love them. I wear them all the time. I don't, they're downstairs, so I'll pop that picture in too. Um, oh my goodness. Then I did my Will-O-Wisp socks. And then we got into sweater mania and I knit the epistrophe cardigan for myself for Rhinebeck. That was my Rhinebeck sweater. And that was knit out of the Foster Sheep Farm DK. And that is, uh, a Romney Wensleydale cross yarn, uh, in the natural color. And the blue is just dyed blue. And that's done by Carol Foster from Foster Sheep Farm. And Carol's awesome. She also has, I knit it in that because when I was at the New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival, Carol was there and I, I met her and she had her epistrophe out as a sample um, in that yarn and I just fell in love with it. So I bought the yarn and decided to do the epistrophe in it. And uh, Carol was very supportive all year long about it. Um, while I was knitting it, she, I kept, panicking that I didn't have enough yarn and she was just really supportive. So when Rhinebeck rolled around, that was my Rhinebeck sweater, she wore hers too and I'll pop a picture of us wearing it. And it also made it into Kate Davies post Rhinebeck blog, which was really cool. And I also for Rhinebeck knit my husband a Tamarack by Jason Flood for um, Brooklyn Tweed and that was knit out of Brooklyn Tweed Quarry in the color Obsidian. Um, that sweater came out amazing. Uh, also had some issues with it. I my it was the first time I knit a swatch that was the gauge was way too big. Um, like I said, I'm normally a very tight knitter, but for this yarn, um, if you don't know, the Brooklyn Tweed Quarry is not plied, and it's practically like knitting with roving. Um, so it's very delicate. Once it's knit up, it's very strong, but when it's just in the cake, if you pull too hard, it will break. Um, I did break it many times knitting this sweater. So I think that I was subconsciously knitting it very loosely because I didn't want to pull on it too much. Um, so I did go down a size on the sweater for him. Uh, but when I had finished the body, it was still way too long. Um, so I ended up having to rip it back but because it was done in moss stitch in this yarn, it doesn't really rip out nicely. Because like I said, it's not super wash. It's not plied. Um, so it's very sticky wool. So I had to cut six inches off the bottom and then pick it out and pick up the stitches and then end it the hem. That was a nightmare. But it came out really well. And, and now it fits in nicely. And it fits into his wardrobe really well. So that was really exciting. And he wore that to Rhinebeck because he came with me which was a lot of fun. I don't think he'll ever come back. <laughs> and he was horrified to see how much we all spend on yarn there. But um, 
Uh, I was glad he came. It was a lot of fun. And uh, we had a lot of fun at Rhinebeck this year. Um, we, you know, we didn't stay too long. We didn't do too much at the festival. Um, I did volunteer at Indian Entangled with Amber, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, mostly so we could get in and shop early, because I wanted to buy this yarn um, and a few other little things at Indian Entangled. But um, I really took it easy at Rhinebeck this year. I mean, I did spend a lot, but I mean, it's Rhinebeck. How do you not spend a lot? Uh, but I, I didn't stand in line at the... Uh, souvenir tent for like two hours and I just took it easy and we sat around and knit and, and just hung out and enjoyed it uh, which was nice and uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to go back next year I still might because I really want to go with uh, my friend Amy from Happy Little Yarn Hi, Amy. Uh, we talked about getting an Airbnb together maybe inviting some other of our uh, knitting friends that we don't get to see in person so if you're interested in coming to Rhinebeck with us, let me know. Um, but I definitely will not be shopping because, well, I don't want to get into that. I'm doing something else this year, but I'll get to that. Um, anyway, so those were our Rhinebeck sweaters. And then when we got back from Rhinebeck, I obviously had to cast this on right away. So this was my next project. I cast it on. I obviously didn't finish it right away, but I cast it on. Then I did a sweater for my cousin who's having a baby like right now um, and that is the old growth sweater by Tim Can Knits and the yarn is flying fin yarn in the uh, rocky shore colorway and that was held double that's a fingering weight yarn I held it double and it came out gorgeous then I did the rest of the socks that I showed and the last thing I knit was a pair of Bingo's mitts for my husband. Um, he likes to wear them when he's gaming, and so I did that. He actually picked this yarn out at Squaw, so I'll put that picture in. And I have a bunch of them. Oh my god. That was so much knitting this year. So, um, I knit a lot, obviously. It was like six sweaters and if I finish this sweater this week, which I probably will because I'm about to start the last sleeve, there'll be seven sweaters for the year, 12, well, no, it's 14 pairs of socks, 12 entries, two of them were shorty, so they count as one entry. Um, two shawls, two baby sweaters, Three pairs of fingerless mitts and a hat for a friend that I forgot to show because it's not on her way. But anyway, it was a lot. So that was 2018 for me. I also bought a lot of yarn. Um, if you are a long time viewer of the podcast, long time, it's been 15 episodes. But if you've been watching, um, you'll see that I have acquisitions every time I podcast. And and I have some today, uh, primarily Christmas gifts. Um, but I definitely spent a lot of money on yarn this year. And it's really hard to be a part of this community online and not constantly buy stuff. Because I'm always seeing gorgeous yarn on Instagram and other knitting related items, patterns, things that are coming out, things that I want to do. Um, and it's always rushing to the next thing and getting excited for the next project and trying to keep up with all the designers who are constantly putting out amazing products, projects that I want to knit all of. Um, and so it gets kind of hard and I put a lot of stress on myself this year to knit a lot of stuff. And for no reason. I didn't even gift knit. I, I knit throughout the whole year. I knit maybe four things that I gave as gifts, and only one of them was, or two of them were Christmas gifts, a pair of socks and uh, fingerless mitts, but it was like stupid that I put this much pressure on myself, and honestly, I think I got carpal tunnel now. Well, I've always had carpal tunnel, but it's been flaring up. So it's like, ah. And I'd like to save some money 
this year. I so I'm going to Squam in the fall. So the September Squam workshops. So I'll be there for a week. Um, and so I'm going to save up some of my money for that. And I want to do all the workshops, even the ones that aren't knitting related. I'm really interested in them. It seems like a lot of fun. And also they have a marketplace there. And I'll probably buy some yarn there. It'll be the end of the year. But my goal for 2019 is to not buy, that's not true. I'm going to buy some yarn. But only for two specific projects, which I'll talk about. Um, everything else that I have planned for this year, I already have the yarn for. I bought so much yarn this year. But I don't need to buy any more yarn. So that is my goal. You can hold me to it. I want to not be so gluttonous because it's just, it's very, I don't like the way it makes me feel. Um, it feels like it's all about buying and buying and buying. And, and that just seems, I don't know. It's just a lot. I don't want to do it this year. So. First, I'm going to talk about my whips, and my goal is to finish all of these projects before I cast on anything else. You could hold me to that. So, the first project, and I'm going to show them to you in the order in which I plan to knit them. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So these, some of these you have seen before and some of them you have not, but they've been on my needles a while and they need to go. There's also a pile of UFOs over there. Let's stick that picture. I'm not worrying about those. Those are, I'll get to them when I get to them, if I get to them, whatever, no big deal. I'm missing the project. There it is, okay. Um, but I don't, I don't, those are just a bunch of UFOs. Some of them are gonna get frogged, I've already decided. And some of them are, I don't know, those don't count. These, I went through all of my whips yesterday and all everything. I organized everything yesterday. So I, these are all the whips that I want to finish. First one is my Ramona cardigan. So many of you are probably familiar with the Ramona. Let's see if I can picture out for you. It's black and white, but you get the idea. This is the Ramona cardigan by Elizabeth Smith. Very, very simple. Um, and I decided to make it in Lopi. So I have this Let Lopi in I have no idea what color this is. 57. I think it's the medium gray. I don't think it's the lightest one or the darkest one. So I did it in that. I thought it would be fun to do a really fuzzy, cozy sweater. Um, so here we are so far. It's not much to look at at the moment. But I finished the body, and it has this kind of uh, beaded rib going on at the bottom. And then up the sides. And then also for the raglan increases, it has a little decorative. That's nice. So I'm just starting the cuff on the first sleeve, and I have the other sleeve, and then the button bands. So I hope to finish that this week. And you know, Lopi, Let Lopi is a Aran weight yarn. It doesn't feel like it. I I, I was assured that it really is Aran weight, um, and that it's. Uh, blooms once it's been washed. So hopefully that's the case. Um, but either way, I, I really like it. It's not, it's, it's itchy against my bare skin. Not even itchy, it's like just rough. 
but over a shirt it's fine and so I think this will be a really cute sweater to wear over like flannels and stuff. So that is the first project that will be finished. Then I'm going to finish my hat. So I cast on, I had leftovers from this sweater and I thought it would be really cute to make a matching hat. So I started a throwback hat. <laughs> And I just started the um, color work for the bottom of this. So I have that and then this. And it actually worked out pretty well for the... Um, yeah. It's a good look. But the stitch count worked out perfectly. Forget how many repeats it is. But um, I took the measure, the stitch count for a worsted hat pattern, a basic one, and then I used that to divide the amount of stitches for the repeat I needed for the color work, and it worked out perfectly. So, um, yep, so I'm going to have a hat to match my throwback. So that will be the next one. And actually, I have a whole skein of the magpie left, so you can see that. So this is the magpie fibers. So that's that, the hat. Then I have my Timber Cove shawl, which I put on the needles, I don't even know, April? Forever ago. And it's gorgeous. I just haven't worked on it. Um... So it's a textured stitch pattern. Um, it's a pay for pattern, so I don't want to give it away, but it's, you know, a lot of knit below type of things. And it doesn't want to lay nicely, but it's knit top down with the increase in the middle. And it is a big triangle, which I love. And then, um, so you do that, and then there's a cabled border, which I'm doing in a third color, which is this mint. So I think this is going to be gorgeous. Uh, it is fingering weight, which I don't normally like to do. There is a worsted weight version, but I'd already cast this on before that came out. Um, but I'm doing this in... Um, it, Haven Fiber Arts is... Now Midnight Makers, uh, but when I bought it, it was Haven Fiber Arts. And this is in her single merino. And it's I've actually never knit with singles before, other than Brooklyn Tweed. Um, it's really nice, really soft and squishy uh, and very warm. So it, it's very different from this. Um, both Superwash Merino. But this is a plied, and this is a single, and I don't know, I just feel like this is so soft and squishy when it's wrapped up, which is the shape I like, so it will wrap nicely. I think that I'll really like this one. So that will be finished soon. Um, it is a very slippery yarn. I prefer to knit on chow goose, no, red lace, metal needles. However, this was so slippy that I had to put them on the uh, wooden Licka needles, um, which I don't typically like, but for this yarn, it works out really well. So that's my next whip. And the Timber Co. Shawl is by Megan Mack. Um, my throwback hat, obviously, is the pattern from Andrea Mowry, this chart, um, but there's no actual pattern for that. I'm just making it up as I go. And then, this freaking sweater, my Tegna. <laughs> uh, we're still here. I have about three more inches of stockinette before I, three more inches of stockinette before I uh, split for the sleeves. And I think once I get there, I'll be 
you know, doing the sleeves and there's um, shaping for the shoulders and things like that and it's cropped. So it should go faster. But um, this is the spun right round Reaper's Rags that I talked about. This yarn is fingering, but it's like light, light fingering. Um, and I mean, this is like 300 plus stitches. I had to go up in my stitch count to get gauge, or not to get gauge, but to get the size I wanted because my gauge was so teeny tiny with this yarn and my tight knitting. So this is definitely one of those project knitter projects. Like I, I just want it done. I just want to wear it. So I will power through this, but I am not enjoying knitting all of this stuff in it. So like I said, I think when I split for the sleeves, it will be nicer. So again, this is Tegna by Caitlin Hunter, if you don't know, because maybe you live under a rock. <laughs> and the yarn is Spun Right Round Reaper's Rags. So it will be gorgeous when it's done. If it gets done. So that's on the list next. And then lastly on the list is my Portage cardigan. So the Portage cardigan is by Melissa Chassoury. Um, this this cardigan, and then I'll also show you the back. It's all um, they're cables, and then along the side. Let's see if there's a picture in here. There's a cable down the side. No, it is not, there's no picture in the printed pattern, but on Ravelry on, on the pattern page, there is a picture. There's a cable. You can't really see it in the schematic, but it runs down the sides under the arms. And it's just a little cable. Um, so I'm going to do that. I already cast it on, but then I realized I had to do the socks, so I stopped. Um, so we're just, just here. Uh, this is Primrose Yarns, Whatever the Weather, which is their Rhinebeck exclusive colorway. And this is on their Marques base, which is an MCN DK. And um, it's pretty much every single color. So this is uh, what that looks like. And if you saw one of my last episodes, you'll see that I uh, told my husband he could pick the yarn we were at Rhinebeck for this sweater. Um, and that I didn't need anything special. And then he saw this and was like, oh no, you need that. He also is a yarn snob. This is what it looks like in a cake. So, and it's really soft. I know I'll wear this sweater a lot. So, and I'll, I know I said I was gonna show this all to you in the order in which I'm gonna knit it, but I think I'm going to knit this before the Tecna. I think I'm gonna do, you know what, I might do it before the shawl too. So I want to wear it and I don't want it to get too warm before that happens. So I think I'll do the Ramona and then this and then everything else. So that's it for whips that I'm going to be working on in the new year. Um, once those are done, I have plans. So the first thing is that I did the yarn The advent calendar with Happy Little Yarns, which is Amy. <laughs> and it was gorgeous. I've already balled up a few because I was anxious to cast it on, but I'm obviously not casting it on till I finish all these other things. But here's a few balls of this yarn. And here's a few more I haven't wound up. Oh my 
ones. These are all the bright ones. I actually took the bright ones out. I'll tell you why in a second. But here's some of the bright ones. And... More. So they're absolutely gorgeous. It was so much fun to do this advent calendar. Um, I showed there's the box. The box it came in. It's just gorgeous. And um, there was all kinds of other things in there. Um, some candy, some teas, stickers, pins, um, stitch markers etc. Uh, so it was an awesome advent calendar. And then, well, anyway, I'm going to do the Land of Sweets cow from Helen Stewart, which was her advent mystery knit along last year. And I really loved it, but I didn't have enough minis, and now I do. So uh, I plan on casting that on at some point in the new year. It's one of my uh, planned projects for 2019. And... My other projects for 2019, I should grab the yarn for those. Let's see. So I put them all in my queue. So if you follow me on Ravelry at all, you can look at my queue, I believe. But I plan on knitting that. And then the Oracle by Kristen from Full of Vine. Oh my God, the yarn. So much yarn. All right, so I got, I talked about it earlier this year because I loved it so much. Um, Nana from, or Nicole, from Von Herzen Craft and Fiverr dyed up a line of colors based on the Grand Budapest Hotel movie. And I bought three skeins in the Merino Silk Singles. This is the colorway Zero, so they're all based on characters. If you've seen it, you know that Zero is like the main character. This is Gustav. And this is Agatha. And this is the High Twist Single Ply Superwash Merino Silk. So I'm going to do the Oracle Shawl. Let's see if I can show you the picture. Might have to pop it in, but we'll try. So it's a pie shawl. It has some brioche in it. I've never done brioche. I've been kind of avoiding it. It's my uh, contrarian nature. Everyone's been doing brioche this year, but I gave into the trends. I did this, I did that, whatever. Moving on. So I'm gonna do the oracle. Then I'm going to do the Lottie by Brandy Velton, and it's basically just a long, simple cardigan. And that I'm going to do in the yarn that I frogged from my light flax sweater that I talked about earlier. So I have, um, this is Lemonade Shop, and this was her Rhinebeck 2017 colorway. I knit my light flax in that, uh, but I didn't like it, so I frogged it. This is that colorway. So I'm going to do the Lottie in that, which looks like this. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. So just a simple, long, open cardigan, no buttons. I don't do buttons. Um, and this colorway. So that's going to be gorgeous. And the next on my list, oh, oh mm, I'll talk about that last because it's part of my Christmas presents, but I'm really excited about it. Then I got two skeins of the, um, what is this called? Paradise Base. It's Stranded Dye Works Paradise Base, which is her uh, MCN. And the colorway is, if I want exposure, I'll get my tits out, bras off a clock. So this was the charity that um, Countess Ablaze did uh, this year. And this is hmm, Amy Florence's colorway. 
So, so if this is gorgeous. So I have two skeins of this, and I'm going to do the Akamai shawl from Isabel Kramer. So let me grab a picture of that. I have a lot of shawls on my list this year because, well, I'll talk about that in a second. This is the Akamai shawl. So I think that'll look really nice. And then, oh, I'm gonna do these colorwork mitts. They're um, called Wit Beyond Measure and they're based on um, Ravenclaw, Harry Potter, Hogwarts, whatever. I'm a Ravenclaw because that's the best house. So I'm gonna do those mitts, but I'm gonna do them in the same yarn I have left over from my epistrophe card again. So I should have enough left over for those. Those will be cool. And then I'm gonna do the Vertices Unite Shawl. I don't think I grabbed all the colors I picked, but um, I grabbed a bunch of these. I've shown them before, except for this one color, which I'll show you in a second. So I have all of these grays with yellows and greens. And um, this one, and this one, and this one, this one. that one. And then the newest one I'm adding to this pile, just to make it a little bit more dramatic, is another yarn I got from um, the Itcher Yarn wish Wishes Granted. Um, this is called Fur Shore, like F-I-R, and this is Driftwood Dye Works. Uh, the label is amazing. I love this label. And it's a very vibrant emerald green with black speckles. So that is going into the pile. And that will be my Vertices Unite by Stephen West. And here's a picture of that. So I'll be doing the big one. So I think that's the big one, but I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. I'll put this on my list. So then the other thing I wanted to knit was um, The Sinister Cadigan by Marna Gilligan. Um, and that's this. So this is the one I don't have yarn for, and this is the one project that I'm going to allow myself to purchase the yarn for. So cute. Look at that color work sweater. The little sinister kitty. Um, love this. I want to do this in Quince & Co. Chickadee. Or Finch. Whichever is the fingering weight one. Um, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do um, navy, pink, and white. But, um, so I don't have the yarn for that. I do have the pattern because I bought the pattern kit which came with this cute bag and all these stitch markers and I showed it on one of the last podcasts. Um, so that's also in the plans. And then the last thing which I, I put off because I'm, it's also part of my acquisitions is, um, for Christmas presents this year, I got this kit from Barrett Wool, which I've talked about their kits and their yarn a million times. I love it. It came with so much yarn. And the kit is to make Sven Scandinavian. I have been wanting to make this forever, and then the kits came back, and I had to buy it. So I am so excited to make Sven and Solvig, and uh, this is the picture of uh, Susan's, and she even added uh, her modifications to it so you can make them just like this. 
and it's also in my queue to do this year. <sighs> so as you can see, other than one sweater, I'm planning to knit everything out of stash. Um, those are just the things I have currently planned in my queue, but um, I'm sure I'll knit a million more things. I also didn't put in my queue any socks. I'm going to knit a bunch of socks because I can't help myself, and I have a ton of sock yarn that I bought this year, like way too much. Um, so I know I'll be knitting a bunch of socks, but I'm not going to put them in my queue. I'll just knit them as I feel like it. And lastly, I'm going to talk about a few gifts I got for Christmas. And then I will send you on your way because this is getting to be a really long, boring podcast. And I'm sorry. So if you're still here, thank you. So um, the first thing I want to show you, which wasn't really a gift, was... Uh, Amber and I were going through yarn because she was looking for something to cast on and she had a few skeins left of this that she'd already knit something out of, so she gave it to me. This is a uh, Tosh DK and I forget the colorway, but I'll find it and put it in the show notes. Um, it's just this gorgeous tonal greeny gray color. So I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. It's not quite enough for a sweater. It could be a sweater for a child or a really skinny person, like my mom. We'll see. We definitely could do a shawl out of this. In fact, I could do another Paris Toujours or something similar. But I already have a green Paris Toujours. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. And then. The only other thing I have for yarn is in the Happy Little Yarn Advent Calendar for Christmas Day was a full skein of yarn. And this is um, her fingering uh, Superwash Merino Nylon base. It's 450 yards and it's called Aurora Borealis. It is gorgeous. Look at this. Oh my god. Could you die this is so beautiful oh my god amy i love this yarn um so this will likely be a pair of socks uh the way it's dyed up it's going to pool and i bet it's going to pool into micro stripes which will be stunning so perfect for a sock i think if I made anything else with it, it would pool in a way I don't like. You know, like a, um, I don't know, a pair of, uh, not, well, you could probably do mittens with it, but um, like a sock head hat or something, I think it would just pool in a way I wouldn't like. But socks, I think it'll be perfect. So that's that for yarn. I didn't get a lot of yarn, but I did get a bunch of knitting things. Uh, I got some books. The first one I'll show you is not actually knitting. Um, I really want to get a rigid head of loom. Um, and I haven't gotten a loom yet, but I did get the book, Rigid Head of Weaving. Um, this is an interweave uh, publication. And I was looking at a bunch of videos and things uh, on how to use a Rigid Head of Loom, and this was a book that came highly recommended. Um, so I really want to get into weaving, so maybe I'll get a loom next year. We'll see. I'm trying not to buy things this year, so if anyone wants to buy me a loom, feel free. Um, then I got, which I really wanted, is Alternate Stitch Dictionary. Um, 200 Modern Knitting Motifs. So this book is gorgeous. All these really cool um, color work motifs. There's a skull and crossbones in here that I love. And my husband wants me to make him um, some fingerless mitts and I think that's a nice pattern. But there's also some patterns in here and one of them is this Skull and crossbones pullover that I think I would turn into a cardigan. So cute. So I love this book, and I I know a bunch of you already have it. I've been wanting it, so I got that. 
Uh, that was from my mom. And then I think this one was from my husband. But I also really wanted the uh, Knit Like a Latvian uh, book. The ton of pat color work patterns for mittens. Let's put that. So I'm thinking that I might knit a bunch of mittens for people next year for Christmas. So, and I want to get started on that early. So I, maybe in the summer I'll start doing that. We'll see. But there was some gorgeous mittens. Where's the one I love so much? Oh, it's pink crocus. Yeah. I love those. I'm gonna have to make those. So I got those. And I got oh so excited for this. Ah! I love knitting with nine inch circulars. I do all my socks and my fingerless mitts or mitts in general on nine inch circulars. So this is the Chavu mini twist set. It comes with needles sizes 0 through 3 US, which is 2 millimeters through 3.25 millimeters. And there's both 2 and 3 inch needles. So these are the 3 inch and these are the 2 inch. And then they come with the 9 inch circular cables. And it's in this super cute little pouch. So love this i've been wanting this forever so got this from the hubby yay and that's it for knitting and then i got fabric related things two things um first i got a calendar that i'm bringing to my office and it's the rifle paper company 2019 calendar and so it's just all the different fabric patterns that they have, which I love so much. That'll be nice to have in my office. And then the last thing I got, and this is, well, Amber and Carol, if you're watching and you want to be surprised, look away. Otherwise, I'm ruining the surprise. Um, I was watching... Fat Squirrel, and she ordered this from Spoonflower as a giveaway for her Patreons. Um, and she's not selling them in the shop, so she's talked about how you could do it yourself. So this is a fat, a fat quarter that I got on Spoonflower. Um, see who it's designed by? I don't know. I'll try to link to it. But I had this done on the linen cotton canvas. And all you have to do is order one fat quarter to get this print. Um, the whole thing printed. And I'm going to roll the edges and miter the corners and turn them into tea towels for myself and Amber and her mom Carol. And they are these... Um, Sweater calendars, knitted sweater calendar. It says 2019 on the bottom, and then each month is a little sweater with the yarn going around it. How cute is that? So I'm just going to finish the edges, and they will be cute little tea towels for the three of us. So um, if you didn't watch the latest Fat Squirrel, um, then I will try to link to this somewhere, um, but uh, she said that if you go on Spoonflower and you search for Wooly with two L's, Wooly 2019, this will come up. And there's an English version and a Welsh version. And like I said, I just ordered fat quarter, so the entire print fits on one fat quarter. So you could do whatever you want with it, but I don't, it doesn't really make sense to me to do anything else with it other than finish the edges. So that's that. I'm going to work on that this week, I hope. 
And I get a bunch of other things, but they're not really knitting or sewing or fiber related at all. So, oh, that's not true. That's not true. I got this swatch watch from my mom. Look at it. It's knitted. Let me take it off. It has a knit print on it. Oh my God, it's so cute. Look at this watch. And then it even has some drop stitches. Is that the cutest thing you've ever seen? I love it so much. So I got that, and then I also got, this was actually a gift to myself. If you follow me on Instagram, then you've seen it. Otherwise, you've seen it for the first time. This is a stitch marker necklace from Bed of Roses. She's on Etsy, and also on Instagram, Bed of Roses. And it's all these progress keepers and stitch markers. And then there's also this huge lobster clasp with little stitch markers on it. The rest of them have lobster clasps, so they're more like progress keepers. I mean, you could use them either way. But these are like regular stitch markers. It's this stunning. And then she even stamped some of them with custom stamps. Um, so I got my initials on there, R, P. And then one has a heart, which is on a project already. And then you can choose your necklace so I got it on this rose gold chain but you could do a leather cord or whatever and I have been wearing it all the time as jewelry I mean people who don't even knit don't even know I've been getting so many compliments on it it's so beautiful it just looks like a beautiful long pendant necklace but wherever I go I have stitch markers it's awesome so now we've gone over an hour. Hopefully I'll edit it down to less than that. Um, thank you so much for being here with me and spending this past year with me. Um, I look forward to talking to you more in the new year about all kinds of fun fiber related stuff. And uh, don't forget to like your videos, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I have decided that my um, podcast schedule is going to be monthly. I tried to do it bi-weekly, but it's just not working. So. Monthly podcast. Um, and yeah, stay in touch. Uh, follow me on Instagram. I'm the knitting unicorn uh, with dashes, the dash knitting dash uh, underscore unicorn. I'll put it on the screen. And um, happy new year to all of you. I wish you a wonderful new year. And see you in 2019. Bye.